This section tests your ability to comprehend spoken English. It is divided into three parts, each with its own directions. You are not permitted to turn the page during the reading of the directions or to take notes at any time. Part A. Directions. Each item in this part consists of a brief conversation involving two speakers. Following each conversation, a third voice will ask a question. You will hear the conversations and questions only once, and they will not be written out. When you have heard each conversation and question, read the four answer choices and select the one, A, B, C, or D, that best answers the question based on what is directly stated or on what can be inferred. Then fill in the space on your answer sheet that matches the letter of the answer that you have selected. Now let's begin part A with the first conversation. Number one. There must be an issue with the speaker's microphone. I can hardly hear anything. I can barely hear too. Why are these people probably having trouble hearing the speaker? Number two. Can you help me move this table? I'm afraid I'm in a hurry right now. What does the woman mean? Number three. I'm so stressed about this presentation. What if I mess up? Hey, relax. You know your stuff. Just wing it if you get nervous. What does the woman suggest the man do if he gets nervous? Number four. Does the name Michael Thompson ring a bell? Michael Thompson? I don't think so. What does the man ask the woman about Michael Thompson? Number 5. I didn't know you were interested in chemistry. Well, it's a requirement to take at least one science course, and chemistry seemed the most interesting. Why is the man taking the chemistry course? Number 6. Have you ever seen a tiger? Only at the zoo. What does the man mean? Number 7. John asked you a lot of questions, didn't he? Yes, and I'd like to know why. What does the man wonder about John?
Number 8. Do you know when the repairs on that road will be finished? The sooner the better, if you ask me. What does the man say about the road repairs? Number 9. Did you know Karen is organizing a charity event? Yes, she told me about it last week. What can be inferred about Karen? Number 10. I practiced that piano piece for weeks. I was sure I'd nail it at the recital. Yeah, it sounded great when you were practicing at home. But you seemed a little nervous on stage. What does the man imply about the woman's performance? Number 11. I love this new mystery novel. The plot is so intricate, I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. Be careful not to read too far ahead though. You might accidentally spoil the surprise for yourself. What does the woman warn the man about? Number 12. I can't believe how expensive these concert tickets are. Maybe we should just watch it on TV. It wouldn't be the same experience though. Live music is always so much more energetic. What does the man prefer? Number 13. This documentary about rainforests is fascinating. It's amazing how diverse the plant and animal life is. Yeah, it really makes you appreciate the delicate balance of nature, doesn't it? What does the man imply about the documentary? Number 14. I'm so excited to finally visit Italy. I've always dreamed of seeing all the historical landmarks. It's a beautiful country, no doubt. But don't forget to try the food. Italian cuisine is world-renowned. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number 15. I finally finished writing that short story. I poured my heart and soul into it. That's fantastic. I'm sure it's amazing. Now you should let it sit for a day or two and come back to it with fresh eyes before editing. What does the woman recommend the man do?
Number 16. This new movie has been getting rave reviews. Critics are calling it a masterpiece. Wow, that sounds promising. Let's check the showtimes and see if we can catch it this weekend. What does the man imply about the movie? Number 17. I can't believe it's already thundering outside. I was hoping to go for a walk in the park. Don't worry. These storms usually pass quickly. Maybe we can wait it out and see if the weather clears up. What does the woman suggest? Number 18. I'm so lost trying to navigate this new city. I wish I had a map. No problem. Let's pull over and ask someone for directions. There should be a coffee shop up ahead. Maybe they can help. What does the man suggest they do? Number 19. This museum exhibit on ancient Egypt is fascinating. Look at all these intricate hieroglyphics. They are amazing, aren't they? It's incredible to think people used these symbols to communicate thousands of years ago. What does the man find interesting about the exhibit? Number 20. I can't believe how clear the night sky is. We should try stargazing sometime soon. Great idea. Maybe we can find a spot outside the city limits where there's less light pollution. What does the woman suggest they do to improve their stargazing experience? Number 21. I finally finished knitting that scarf. It took me forever, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. Wow, it looks amazing. The colors are so vibrant. You should enter it in the local craft fair. What does the man suggest the woman do with her scarf? Number 22. The line at the grocery store is incredibly long. I hope it moves faster soon. Don't worry, these lines usually go down pretty quickly around this time. What does the man reassure the woman about? Number 23. 
This new hiking trail is beautiful. The scenery is breathtaking. I agree. And it doesn't seem too difficult either. Perfect for a relaxing afternoon. What does the man imply about the trail? Number 24. This new stargazing app is incredible. I can point my phone at any constellation and it tells me everything about it. That's awesome. Maybe we can find a spot outside the city limits this weekend where there's less light pollution and try it out. What does the man suggest they do? Number 25. Wow, those cookies smell delicious. Did you get them from the bakery down the street? Nope, I baked them myself. It's a new recipe I wanted to try. What does the woman say about the cookies? Number 26. I aced that job interview today. I was so nervous beforehand, but I think my answers went well. That's amazing. Your practice sessions definitely paid off. You seem confident and prepared. What does the woman imply about the man's interview performance? Number 27. I can't believe I forgot my wallet again. This is the third time this month. Maybe it's time to invest in a phone case with a card holder so you don't keep leaving it behind. What does the woman imply about the man? Number 28. I can't wait to wear my new swimsuit to the beach this weekend. That is a bold choice. It looks interesting. Maybe you have another option? What does the man imply about the swimsuit? Number 29. I ordered a ton of groceries online this week. There's no way we can eat it all before it goes bad. Don't worry, we can always freeze some things for later. Maybe next time plan a few meals beforehand to avoid overstocking. What does the woman suggest about the groceries? Number 30. I'm not sure what to pack for our camping trip next weekend. The weather forecast keeps changing. 
Don't worry, pack layers. That way you'll be prepared for whatever the weather throws your way. What does the man suggest about packing for the trip? Part B. Directions. This part of the test consists of extended conversations between two speakers. After each of these conversations, there are a number of questions. You will hear each conversation and question only once, and the questions are not written out. When you have heard the questions, read the four answer choices and select the one, A, B, C, or D, that best answers the question based on what is directly stated or on what can be inferred. Then, fill in the space on your answer sheet that matches the letter of the answer that you have selected. Don't forget, during actual exams, taking notes or writing in your test book is not permitted. Now let's begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 to 34. Oh man, I just can't take it anymore. I really want a dog. Here we go again. Don't you think a pet would be a lot of work, especially in a small apartment like this? I know, I know. But I'd be responsible. I'd take it for walks, clean up after it, and give it all the love in the world. Walks are one thing, but what about barking or scratching up the furniture? And don't forget the extra cost of food, vet bills and potentially pet rent from the landlord. We could get a small, hypoallergenic breed that wouldn't shed much. And I've been researching low-maintenance apartment dogs that are good for first-time owners. Okay, but wouldn't it limit our freedom a bit? We couldn't just go on spontaneous weekend trips or stay out late if we had to come back and walk the dog. True, but we could plan ahead for pet sitters or doggy daycare. Besides, wouldn't having a pet make our apartment feel more like home? It would be a great companion, especially when you're working late. Hmm, I hadn't thought about it that way. Maybe a small, well-trained dog wouldn't be so bad. Exactly. We could even start by fostering a dog and see how it goes before committing to adopting one permanently. Fostering could be a good compromise. And who knows, maybe a furry friend would be nice to have around after all. Number 31 what is Lisa trying to convince Daniel of? Number 32. Why is Daniel hesitant about getting a pet? Number 33. What suggestion does Lisa make to address Daniel's concerns? Number 34. What does Daniel ultimately seem open to? Questions 35 to 38. Hi, I'm Maya Lopez, and I need help. I completely forgot about registration and the deadline is today. Is it too late for me to register for classes? Hello Maya. Don't worry, take a deep breath. While the official deadline was today, there is a late registration period with a fee. Oh thank goodness. How much is the fee? It's a flat fee of $75. However, there are some additional things to keep in mind. Classes may already be full, 
and you might have a limited selection. Full? That's a problem. I really need to get into Professor Lee's intro to psychology class, but it fills up fast. Let's check the system together. Unfortunately, Professor Lee's class is closed, but there are a few other intro to psychology sections still open. Oh no. None of the other professors have such good reviews online. I understand. Here's what I can suggest. Since you're late registering, you might want to prioritize getting into required courses for your major first. Then, you can try to add Professor Lee's class during the ad drop period after the first week of classes. The ad drop period? Is there a chance the class might open up then? It's possible. Some students may drop the class during the first week, freeing up spots. You can monitor the class availability online and try to register as soon as a spot opens. Okay, that's a good plan. Let's register me for the other intro to psych course and the rest of my required classes. Excellent. Thank you so much, you saved the day. Of course Maya. Just remember, late registration fees are avoidable. Set calendar reminders or check your student portal regularly for important deadlines next semester. You're absolutely right. I won't let this happen again. Thank you again for your help. Number 35. What is the main reason Maya visits Mr. Johnson's office? Number 36. Mr. Johnson mentions there can be downsides to registering late. Which of the following is not a consequence mentioned in the conversation? Number 37. Besides late registration, what other strategy does Mr. Johnson suggest for Maya to get into Professor Lee's class? Number 38. What does Mr. Johnson recommend to Maya to avoid late registration fees in the future? Now read along with the directions for Part C in your textbook as they are read to you on the tape. Part C. Directions. This part of the test consists of several talks, each given by a single speaker. After each of these talks, there are a number of questions. You will hear each talk and question only once, and the questions are not written out. When you have heard each question, read the four answer choices and select the one, A, B, C, or D, that best answers the question based on what is directly stated or on what can be inferred. Then, fill in the space on your answer sheet that matches the letter of the answer that you have selected. Now let's begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 to 42. Have you ever wondered how scientists track whale migrations across vast oceans or monitor the health of coral reefs? Often, the answer lies in citizen science. In this talk, we'll dive into the world of citizen science, where everyday people like you and me can contribute to groundbreaking research. So, what is citizen science? Citizen science empowers the public to participate in scientific projects alongside professional researchers. It's not just about collecting data. It's about unlocking new discoveries, solving environmental challenges, and shaping the future of science. Citizen science has a rich history, dating back to birdwatchers and weather observers. Today, it plays a vital role in diverse fields like astronomy, ecology, and even medicine. Citizen science projects have helped us track invasive species, map disease outbreaks, and even discover new galaxies. 
Now let's explore some inspiring examples. From counting backyard birds to monitoring air quality, citizen science projects are making a difference around the globe. We'll see how ordinary people are contributing to vital research and making a real impact on our planet. Anyone can participate in citizen science. I will share a variety of resources and online platforms offering citizen science projects for all ages and interests. Whether you're a tech-savvy individual or nature enthusiast, there's a project waiting for you. Citizen science isn't just about collecting data. It's about fostering a sense of community and collective action. By participating, you become part of a global network of citizen scientists working together to understand and protect our planet. I will conclude by highlighting the positive impact of citizen science on individuals and society. I will encourage the audience to join the movement and unlock the power of discovery within themselves. I will welcome questions from the audience to address any curiosity about citizen science and its potential for future breakthroughs. Number 39. What is the main topic of Dr. Green's revised talk? Number 40. Dr. Green is likely to use examples from which fields to showcase the impact of citizen science? Number 41. Based on the revised talk, what is the target audience for Dr. Green's presentation? Number 42. Dr. Green's talk is likely to inspire listeners to? Questions 43 to 46. Hey everyone and welcome to the International Food Festival. I'm Mark Johnson and I'm fired up to be your host today. Take a look around you, the energy, the smells, the amazing colors, it's a celebration of cultures and cuisines from all over the globe. This festival is your passport to a delicious adventure. We have over 50 vendors representing a mind-blowing variety of countries. From the sizzling spices of Thailand to the melt-in-your-mouth pastries of France, there's something for every taste bud to explore. Be bold. Food is an incredible way to experience different cultures and expand your worldview. This festival is more than just filling your belly, although that's definitely a perk. We'll have live music and dance performances throughout the day, showcasing the vibrant traditions of various countries. There will be fun activities for the whole family, cooking demos for the foodies, and even opportunities to learn a few cool phrases in different languages. It's a full sensory experience designed to sink your teeth into the beauty of cultural diversity. So gather your crew, grab some amazing food, and soak up the awesome atmosphere. This festival is a fantastic opportunity to create lasting memories. Share a plate, swap stories, and celebrate the incredible tapestry of cultures that makes our world so rich and exciting. Without further ado, let's get this food adventure rolling. Wander through the stalls, savor the flavors, and let your taste buds take you on a global journey. Have a fantastic time at the International Food Festival. Number 43. What is the main focus of Mark Johnson's speech? Number 44. Based on Mark Johnson's speech, what activities can attendees expect at the festival besides food? Number 45. 
Number 45. What does Mark Johnson encourage attendees to do at the festival? Number 46. What is the overall tone of Mark Johnson's speech? Questions 47 to 50. We all know the feeling, being pulled in a million directions. Between work, family, personal goals, and the constant buzz of technology, navigating a fulfilling social life can feel like a complex juggling act. But a strong social network is essential for our well-being. Today, we'll explore strategies to create a balanced and enriching social life that complements, not conflicts with, our other commitments. We're social creatures by nature. Human connection provides a sense of belonging, support, and joy. But our social needs vary. Some of us crave large gatherings, while others thrive in smaller, intimate settings. The key is to identify what works best for you, the quality and type of interactions that leave you feeling energized and connected. Maybe you've recently moved to a new city or feel your social circle has shrunk. Fear not. There are many ways to expand your network. Explore your interests. Join a club or take a class related to a hobby you enjoy. Volunteer for a cause you care about, it's a great way to meet like-minded people while making a positive impact. Don't underestimate the power of online communities. Social media groups or online forums can connect you with people who share your passions, even if they're miles away. While expanding your social circle is great, nurturing existing relationships is crucial. Schedule regular catch-ups with close friends and family, even if it's just a virtual coffee date. Small gestures like a thoughtful text message or a handwritten note can go a long way in strengthening bonds. Remember, quality time matters more than quantity. You can't be everywhere at once. It's okay to politely decline invitations if you're feeling overwhelmed. Prioritize commitments that truly align with your needs and schedule some time for solitude and self-care. A healthy social life is balanced, a mix of connection and rejuvenation. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to social life. The key is to find a balance that works for you. Experiment, explore your options, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. By actively building relationships and prioritizing quality connections, you can cultivate a vibrant social life that enriches your well-being and brings joy to your journey. Number 47. What is the main focus of Sarah Jones' talk? Number 48. Sarah Jones suggests that people should consider their Number 49. Based on the talk, which of the following is not recommended for expanding your social network? Number 50. Sarah Jones emphasizes the importance of. Number 50. 